Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for letting me the ears. And again, if you're watching this on video, all the better for those eyeballs. So about a month ago, I gave a presentation to the National Sales Network in Dallas, Texas, and it was all about AI and sales. For those of you who know, I wrote the first book on AI and sales called Sales Ex Machina, how AI is transforming the world of selling. I wrote that in 2017, and ironically enough, at that time I'd finished writing the book, a new seismic shift had just happened in the world of AI that I wasn't aware of. There's this paper right here. It's called Attention is All You Need. It was written by the folks over at Google, which basically changed the game on what we start hearing about generative AI. For example, if if you've used ChatGPT, you know what I'm talking about. It generates text. Well, this new algorithm can generate video, can generate, again, audio, text, whatever it may be, and even images if you use applications like, for example, MidJourney or of the like. Now, things are changing in the world of AI, right? But more importantly, what's changing is how people buy, right? We've always talked about how people buy. But more and more, the customer is actually going into the buying journey and really doesn't want to talk to salespeople unless it's absolutely necessary. In other words, we're reaching a point where people have near-perfect information. I call it the NPI, near-perfect information. And that means that if they have near-perfect information, they can make a buying decision without ever talking to a salesperson. This is happening right now. So we often talk about how we want to train people, enable salespeople to sell more effectively. But we should also look at the other side of that coin. Instead of focusing on how to sell better, we should look at how people buy and then figure out what tools we need to help them buy better. So, for example, if you're looking for, let's say, a camera right now. You're looking for a camera and you go online. There's so many options. You're often confused. You probably put off the decision because, ah, too many options. Let me think about it and never really make a buying decision. Fast forward to future of AI, with the help of AI, what if you could just say, hey, I need to find a camera within this price range with these specifications, find me the top three. And the generative AI goes out and finds this product for you, or at least the top three. This is where we're going with this generative AI. And the reason I wanted to talk about this because ChatGPT has basically taken over a lot of the conversation, right? So if you've not used ChatGPT, it's basically a natural language processor, which means you can ask it a question and it will generate text for you. It can analyze text. It can do several different things. In fact, if you're part of my Sales Velocity Academy, I gave a whole course called Sales GPT on how to use ChatGPT and the different variants that are out there. How popular is ChatGPT? Just for them to reach 100 million global users, it only took them two months. This is what's happening. This is how powerful this new algorithm is. Based on the paper that was released by the folks at Google back in 2017, we're now seeing the results of this algorithm being deployed in the market and being used. So if you've used ChatGPT, you know what I'm talking about. So the adoption rate is very high. Now, there's a lot of generative AI companies, products out there. Again, they can generate video, they can generate images, they can generate text, they can generate audio. This is a new world. Now, a new company out there that's really interesting is called Anthropic. Anthropic just released their version of ChatGPT called Claude. It's actually more powerful than ChatGPT. For example, just to give you kind of an example of how powerful this new uh, machine is, this new, uh, I'll call it generative AI engine called Claude. Again, the company's called Anthropic. For example, if you use ChatGPT, it can handle about 37,000 tokens, I believe. Now, what does that mean? Here's what it means. If it's 37,000 tokens, that means it's about, it can handle 50,000 words, more or less. Now, to put this in perspective, Claude can handle 100,000 tokens. i got to think about that. 100,000 tokens. To put this really into context, imagine that you're reading the book. One of my favorite books is The Jolt Effect. It's 50,000 words, which translates into about 37,000 tokens. And another book I love is The Challenger Sale, which is about 60,000 words, and that's about 45,000 tokens. So in other words, I can take these two books copy and paste, if I could do that, if I had the actual document, copy and paste the whole book, a jolt effect, and the challenger sale, feed it into the generative AI, in this case, Claude, and it could generate a new book for me, right? I could say, generate a new book for me, taking the, the best concepts of these two books and smashing them together. Now, again, I don't know how perfect it'll be, but it, you know, it might just require some editing. But point, that point aside, 
The reality is these AI machines are getting more powerful and this is just the beginning. There's so many different applications that we're gonna be able to use for AI. The question then becomes is how do you and I use the tools? If you're a business, whether you're a small company, medium sized or enterprise company, where do we implement this in our system? And the more we can implement it, execute on these small, narrow niches of AI within our processes, the more efficient we become as a company. Said another way, think of yourself as a small business owner, right? For a moment, if you are, congratulations. Ask yourself, where can I apply some of this generative AI? So for example, chatbots, right? We're not talking the old chatbot, those little chatbots that pop up on, the, uh, you know, on your website. We're talking like next generation, next evolution of these type of chatbots that can actually hold real conversation. If you've ever seen the Google Duplex demo, you understand what I'm talking about. If you've not seen the Google Duplex demo, do me a favor, go to YouTube, type in Google Duplex, and watch the AI make reservations at a salon. It'll actually make reservation at, I think it's a Japanese restaurant. In other words, the AI talks to people and it's very realistic. So the question then becomes is where does this all fit? How do we change our sales behavior? Well, it's not so much that we have to change our sales behavior. Again, we can find ways to use AI to make us more efficient when it comes to selling. But as a company, I would say, where do we implement AI to make buying easier for the client? Again, back to finding the why and how people buy. Keep it in mind that today's buyer is almost reaching near perfect information. Now we can argue about what that near perfect information means. Is that 90% of the information they need? Is it 95%? Depends on the complexity of the solution they're searching for. So for example, if I'm looking for a simple, I'll say pencil, right? Again, I don't need to talk to a salesperson to actually buy a pencil. I can reach near perfect information and make a buying decision. But if I have to buy a million dollar system that has a lot of moving pieces, so to speak, then I'll, I'll need to talk to a salesperson, but I'll probably begin the journey on my own. And maybe when I get to 80, 90% of the way there in my buying journey, then I'll want to talk to a salesperson. My point to all this is AI is changing how we sell, yes, the different tools we can use, but more importantly, it's impacting how buyers are buying. And nobody really knows how this is gonna turn out. Everybody's guessing, right? And how this is gonna turn out. But here are some realities. From the selling side, what's happening right now is that we're investing a lot of money in sales, but what's happening is our sales efficiency isn't going up. And in fact, it's going down. So more tools are not helping. So maybe it's time for us to look at the other side of the coin, what I've been talking about for years, how people buy. If we can understand how customers search for information, how they look up information, and what they need to make a buying decision, we can sell to them more effectively. In the next episode, I'll give you some examples of what's going to change with AI when it comes to the buying process and how we as a company can become more effective in selling in today's market. It truly is about finding the why in how people buy, literally with AI. And on that note, this is Victor Antonio, always reminding you that selling ain't hard if you understand the buyer and you know how to connect with them and you know how. Take care.